Please take your seats. We are going to begin. Ready? So as we get started, uh, and even before I wanna introduce myself, sometimes I start with a joke, but I don't have a joke tonight. But I do have, um, I just wanna pause for a moment. So look around this full room. For me, this is actually the first time since COVID that I have seen this room full like this on a Sunday evening. So thank you all for being here tonight. It's pretty special. So that's not as good as a joke, but it's nice to be back with people in the spring. Good afternoon and welcome to Celebrating Service and Leadership. My name is Trish Gott and I'm the Associate Dean for Academics here at the Staley School. I am so happy, and on behalf of the entire school, we are so well happy to welcome you here this afternoon. So we're moving, and as we move into the final weeks of the academic year, we are taking this opportunity to celebrate some of our soon-to-be graduates. Just give a little hand up if you're one of our soon-to-be graduates. We, we're here to celebrate you. Glad you're here. And of course, some of our valued community members, all of whom have made significant contributions to service and leadership at the Staley School, the university, and in our broader communities. We are reminded today that while the academic year is coming to a close, the work of those we honor continues. We look forward to sharing with you some of what has been achieved and to celebrating all the ways that many of you here in this room serve, lead, and contribute today and in our future. But before we get started, we truly have a special guest here today. President Rich Linton, thank you for joining us. And would you be willing to share a few words of encouragement and congratulations to our group? Do I need a microphone? You do. And I'll give you one. Good, I get to walk around. Thank you. Boy, this is a good looking group of leaders out here today. Uh, I'm Rich Linton, president of Kansas State University, and I wanted to congratulate all of you and thank all of you for the leadership that you've provided to make our community stronger and our community better. You know, when you think about Kansas State University and you think of the community, Kansas State is the community and the community is Kansas State. And it is so vitally important for us to have this incredible town gown relationship that we share, which I will tell you is very, very special here and very different than most other places around the country. But also community leadership, it's what a land grant university does. And that's what makes us different than any other university here in the state of Kansas is we are responsible and we are accountable for relationships with our communities each and every day through the work that we do in all 105 counties through research and extension. I'm looking forward to seeing um, all of the awardees and hearing about the great work that you've done. And with that, I'll say again, congratulations and put your hands up and do a go cats for me. Come on, give me a go cats, go cats. All right, thank you. Thank you, President Lynn. For those of you who are at the Staley School for the first time or back on campus after a while, I will tell you the energy here has been dynamic and we're really lucky to be working with President Linton as we move K-State forward into the next generation of K-Staters. So we appreciate you, of course, taking the time to share with us here at Celebrating Service and Leadership for your service to K-State and of course, for all you're doing throughout the state of Kansas. Now on to our awards. We will begin today by celebrating our Pat J. Bosco Awards for Outstanding Graduating Seniors. This award was established in 2000 to recognize and honor the legacy of Dr. Bosco's exceptional years of leadership at K-State and the vital role he played in the creation and establishment of this school. His continuous support and ongoing contributions are sincerely appreciated. And while Dr. Bosco is not here today, we do thank him for representing this award and what it means for Kansas State. This afternoon, we honor some exceptional students who are graduating with a leadership studies minor and who have excelled in the following areas. 
demonstrated leadership and campus involvement at K-State, academic excellence in their leadership studies coursework, and they have committed to and been involved in multiple aspects of the school. I would like to invite Kim Ralston, our communications administrator, to introduce our first award recipient. Hello, everyone. I am so thrilled um, to invite Dakota Cherney. Um, Dakota is the first recipient of our award today, and Dakota has been such an advocate of the work that we do here at the Steely School in so many ways, as you can see above me. Um, his impact as a class leader on our LEAD 212 students will no doubt leave a lasting impression on them. Um, but I'm presenting this award because um, I've had the privilege, privilege of working with Dakota in our communications work. Um, Dakota is a master storyteller and videographer. The critical work that he has helped us with over uh, during some of his time here at K-State, um, the messaging and, and the way that we share what we do at the Staley School has had a massive impact on how people see us outside of this building. Um, and if you don't believe me, just go to YouTube and scroll through some of the Staley School leadership videos. Um, Dakota's understanding and passion and lived experience of the Staley School mission come through when he takes the footage from the cutting room floor, if He's old enough to remember what that means. Um, and onto the screen in a way that demonstrates the vision and the purpose of the work seemingly effortlessly. Uh, don't get me wrong, I know it takes a lot of time, but your understanding of the Steely School that builds the framework uh, for being able to tell our story. Thank you for being a vital part of our messaging and for embodying everything we do at the Staley School. And we're gonna miss you and I would wish you luck, but sometimes we know that our students don't need luck they have the skill sets that they need to succeed. And we can't wait to see the rest of your story, Dakota. Take it away, Emily. She's next. She's going to present our next award. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Emily Woolard, and I am incredibly honored to introduce Austin Drake this evening. Austin, come on down. Now, I met Austin as a freshman in my Lead 212 learning community. And while he joined our community three weeks into the semester, his addition changed the course of our group's progress and discussions due to his incredible leadership skills and thoughtful insights. I could always count on Austin to go above and beyond in his reflections and to be the first to step in and speak up. Knowing him in his first semester on campus certainly was a reflection for all that he would accomplish as he maximized his time at K-State. Austin has a drive to be both involved in Staley School and across campus and has an expansive list um, of extracurriculars that I'm gonna run through as fast as I can, including being a Bassey, um, where he was administrative chair, a two-time class leader, class leader coordinator currently, a Mandela Washington Fellow student coordinator, an alternative break student coordinator, and a Steiner Leadership Legacy Fellow. Across the university, Austin has worked as a tour guide, a member of Catalyst, was in the Weefold Hall Council, all while being on the Dean's List and working towards his athletic training degree. Um, these involvements really speak to Austin's excellence and his dedication, as well as his, as his commitment to the betterment of the K-State community and his drive to give 100% to all that he does. Um, and Austin has the best time while doing it. Um, my favorite memories of Austin include line dancing with him and our Mandela Fellows, um, taking the group on the Nebraska adventure, right, getting a little bit lost, um, and having him throw a fish to me in this very room in Lee 212. Um, Austin embodies the leadership, the drive, the passion, care, commitment, and fun um, that all of our students should exemplify. And I'm so lucky to have worked with Austin, to have learned from Austin, and also so proud to now call him a friend. Congratulations, Austin. You did it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Emily. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce Kaleo Vincent as a Bosco Leadership Studies Outstanding Graduates, Graduating Senior. Senior Kaleo, would you please join me at the front? I met Kaleo shortly before we left for Italy. I teach one of our classes in Italy in the summer and Kaleo was a part of the class. From the time we met and through our time in Italy, Kaleo demonstrated the kind of leadership that brings a class together and even taught one of the classes that summer. Kaleo is an impressive person with many achievements and accolades, such as Blue Key Honorary, co-director of the Quest Freshman Honorary. She was a leadership ambassador, Lead 212 class leader, Schneider Leadership Legacy Fellow, and many others. I know Kaleo to be a knowledgeable, caring, inclusive leader, someone that exercise, exercises leadership with and alongside others. Beyond her accomplishments, Kaleo is a wonderful person that brings joy to wherever she is and whoever she is with. Please help me in recognizing Kaleo. Finally, Tamara Bauer will come up to honor our final award recipient. What a joy it is to have the opportunity to share about Nate Williams. So Nate, come on down. Nate has been very involved with the Staley School during his time at K-State, as you can see. I've had the great privilege of working closely with Nate in several of these areas, and also as he reflected on and told his story during Wildcat Dialogues and exploring college student belonging in a research study. Nate is always going above and beyond. Throughout every one of these experiences, inside or outside the classroom, Nate consistently exercises leadership through how he co-creates a learning community. He has a way of inviting in all voices, working to elevate the individual and collective learning of each person. Whether in LEAD 405, where he actively experimented on the edge of his comfort zone for um, the greater good of all learning, which he came to debrief with me about, I wasn't in his, his instructor, we were just learning later, um, to as a class leader where he developed the leadership capacity of his students and consistently provided excellent mentorship and support or in Wildcat Dialogues, where he courageously shared his story about identity and privilege to invite others into the conversation. Nate, you exercise leadership as an activity. You are a true coach, one who cares deeply for others, an active learner and mobilizer. I want to thank you deeply for the impact you've had on me and on so many others in the Staley School. Your actions put the values of the Staley School mission into life and you are most deserving of this recognition. Congratulations. Again, congratulations to all of our Pat J. Bosco Leadership Studies Graduating Senior Award recipients. Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Chance Lee to present our next award. Hello, everyone. It is an honor to present the Olivia P. Collins Nonprofit Leadership Outstanding Graduating Senior Award. In the nonprofit program, Students work to specifically develop nonprofit sector leadership skills. They complete specialized coursework. They engage in community organizations through service learning and internships. And they apply their learning to causes, communities, and changes that they want to see in the world. It's an inspiring environment to be around so many people who are interested and committed to and actually are changing things for the better. We have the honor of working with their aspirations to do good every day, and together we explore best practices to work with that uh, desire to do good better. This year is a particularly special year because the award is being named for one of the amazing women who built this program, Olivia P. Collins. Olivia exemplified care for others, 
and care for community. She knew every one of her students really well, and she kept in touch with each of them for all of her days. Each time we would get together, she would update me about every single one of our alumni and the wonderful work they were doing in the world. And she had this look in her eye every time that you knew she cared deeply for her students and their success well beyond their time in the classroom. She was generous with her spirit and with her time, and she was connected to nearly every nonprofit effort in Manhattan for a really long time. She served on boards. She was a volunteer, a donor, and mentor to so many, including myself. And we stand on the shoulders of giants. And this program was built on Olivia's shoulders. <clears throat> Olivia was a friend and she was a mentor to me. And I know she would be really delighted to know our award winner. Sorry for crying during your award. <laughs> Why well, come to Alicia Bergner, come down. So let me talk about Alicia. Um, Alicia is focused, brilliant, generous, and motivated to serve humanity. In the classroom, she made all of our conversations and thus our learning better. Her comments often raise the heat a little bit, some language we use sometimes. It, it surfaced something that we might be talking around, but avoid talking about directly. She never hesitated to offer a critique or a different point of view, and she always did it with kindness and curiosity, which brought other people along. It, was an example of effectively exercising leadership. Alicia has been the president of the Food Recovery Network for the last couple of years and has brilliantly led that organization through a lot of different phases. With the pandemic and the changed landscape, she navigated this change extremely well with kindness and curiosity. That organization had to change. And I think we all know change is extremely hard. She led it again, with kindness and curiosity, and it led us through some really difficult times as an organization, um, and I couldn't think of anyone better to have at the helm than Alicia during that time. Alicia today has with her mom, Shannon, Grandma Janice, thank you for being here, and Alicia, thank you for all of your contributions to the Staley School, well beyond what I mentioned today. I am honored to present to you the first Olivia P. Collins Graduating Senior Award. Up next is Caitlin Long to present our Outstanding Civic Engagement Award. Thanks, Chance. So at this time, we'll recognize the Outstanding Civic Engagement Award, which celebrates students who have lived the mission of the Staley School of Leadership through community engagement and service to others. They've demonstrated commitment to personal development, to intellectual growth, and positive community impact through their work as a citizen leader. These students, this student has committed himself to service and civic engagement through a diversity of experiences on campus and in our community. Evan, will you please join me at the front? So Evan has been committed to bettering our Manhattan and K-State communities since he arrived. He is a part of our food security scholars and has served on the SALT team, the student leadership team for that organization. Additionally, he's a member of international service teams through the Staley School. He'll be spending part of his summer in Ocean View, South Africa to work alongside community on public health initiatives outside of campus. Evan, you volunteered here, there, and everywhere in really meaningful and intentional ways. So I'm thinking about your involvement with True Colors. I'm thinking about Kanza Student Table. I'm thinking about all of the many mobile food distributions where you've really taken a volunteer leadership role. 
And you're intentional in those efforts. You're connecting, you're learning as a pre-med student, as someone who's focused and committed to health, to your engagement in and with community. Now you'll find Evan in the Global Food Systems Leadership Food Security Scholars cubicle upstairs on the second floor where he's studying. He's your pre-med. I know you're studying. I know you're studying but also building really meaningful relationships with his peers and with the faculty at the Staley School, where we lean on you to help us think about our courses and our programs. You always have a smile on your face and you always bring positive energy into this building and into the communities you're a part of. So Evan, thank you and we wish you all the best. Hello, everybody. I forgot who I was here for a minute. So I'm supposed to read the Mary Kay part. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's what happens when you miss rehearsal. <laughs> so I'm representing the secondary major in, in global food systems leadership. It's an interdisciplinary effort between the Staley School and the College of Ag. And we encourage students to explore the grand challenges uh, of enhancing food security for our growing world population. And we do that through a, a systems approach. So GFSL uh, enhances students in their preparation for a diverse range of careers uh, that require integrated knowledge of the global food system and the leadership capacity to skillfully intervene to change the system for the common good. So we're going to highlight a couple students this afternoon who have given in so many different ways, as we know leadership can look a variety of ways. But I'd like to start um, with our first student, Janika Hazelbaker. Would you please come forward? So Janika is from Wentzville, Missouri. She's here with her dad, Mike, today. And uh, Wentzville is the home of the like World Horseshoe Championships, if anybody cares. <laughs> we all have our claim to fame. But in addition to Janika uh, getting the secondary major in global food systems leadership, uh, she'll also graduate with a BA in modern languages in Spanish and a BS in agronomy all while getting a 4.0. So dad, I know you're proud of that. Uh, Janika has been involved inside and outside the classroom. Uh, she traveled to the Gambia last summer uh, with international service teams for eight weeks. And uh, she volunteered there with a local NGO to promote sustainable ag and environmental conservation. And while at K-State, uh, Janika has also worked for USAID Feed the Future Lab. Uh, she's done, I think, three different USDA ag research projects. Uh, she's been a member of the Senior Honorary Blue Key uh, Manners, which is Minorities in Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Related Sciences, the K-State Foundation. And if I listed them all, we'd miss Memorial Day, probably. But Janika, you're being honored today. We want to highlight you because the way you exercise leadership in GFSL is unique. You, you know, you're not the, the most um, talkative person or the, the student that gets noticed the most, but you have this special way to nudge other students into thinking deeply and exploring complex issues. So that's why we're honoring you today. Um, and I, I want to thank you for all you've done for your classmates um, in the classroom, but outside. And I also want to wish you uh, good luck. Janika is going to the University of Arkansas. And of course, one master's is not enough. Uh, she's going to get a master's in ag econ and a master's in rural development. 
And during that time, I think you're going to spend a little bit of that time in Europe as part of that. So, Janika Hazelbaker, congratulations. It is now my honor and privilege to present this, the next Outstanding Graduating Senior Award, Sayer Platt. Sayer, will you please join me at the front of the stage? <laughs> Sayer is a graduating senior in food science and industry with a secondary major in global food systems leadership. Though some may not know this, Sayer is not only an outstanding graduating senior, she is also a wonderful mother to her two children, Naomi and Nehemiah. Sayer is receiving this award today because she undoubtedly exemplifies what it means to truly be a leader. She shows up every single day as her authentic, vulnerable self, sharing her thoughts, ideas about life, the world, and even motherhood with her peers in GFSL. Aside from, from congratulating you with this award, Zaire, we'd also like to thank you. Thank you for your willingness to be vulnerable and share a part of yourself with all of us. Thank you for literally driving an hour every single day to engage in our class sessions. But most importantly, Zaire, thank you for just your willingness to be yourself and to truly exemplify what it means to be a leader and to really just show as an example that leadership is going to look different for each and every one of us. It has been an honor and privilege to know you and learn from you, Zaire, throughout this semester. And I wish you the best of luck as you embark on your next journey with North America's leading flower supplier, Ardent Mills in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mike Finnegan, Assistant Professor, Staley School of Leadership Studies. I'm here with uh, Jay, Murray, Innocent. We are all part of the uh, LEAD 212 teaching team. Uh, and it's our honor to uh, recognize the uh, Candy Hiranaka Outstanding Class Leader Award recipients. Now, Candy Hiranaka, faculty member at Staley School, uh, Candy is listening in on Zoom right now. And to put this into a little bit of context, each year, the LEAD 212 team has about 40 or 50 class leaders, uh, and we train them uh, to uh, encourage, educate, facilitate learning for about 800 plus students. And Candy Hiranaka cared. She encouraged, and this ward really uh, exemplifies uh, Candy's purpose in uh, meeting students where they are, uh, doing everything that you possibly can to help people thrive and succeed. And so, uh, Audrey, Audrey, come on, uh, come on down. There she is, Audrey. And so Audrey Burgoon is uh, our first recipient. Now, Audrey loves the spotlight. She's a graduating uh, senior from K-State in speech theater education, a certificate in nonprofit with Dr. Chance Lee and minors in communication studies, leadership studies, and theater. Whew. 
Now, I said that she loves the spotlight. She loves the spotlight, not just because of her performance background, but because of her ability to spotlight the talent in others. Audrey taught two different sections of LEAD 212 in the fall and the spring. She has mentored and coached over 30 undergraduate students during her time as a 212 class leader. As an actor, you spend countless hours uh, lesson planning and putting the script together. And just like a script, she would uh, uh, put the lesson plan together to meet students where they were, understanding, fa uh, facilitating conversations, creating uh, spaces uh, where students could be safe, where they could be brave, and they could be courageous as they exercise leadership. One of your students specifically said, She's creating a fun yet informative place for us to learn and grow. She challenges me to be a critical thinker. Audrey. And Mary Kay, that's why you come to rehearsal. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that one tomorrow. All right. So it's my honor to uh, introduce our next award recipient, Megan Parkins. I had the pleasure of working with Megan over the course of three semesters, and it almost was four. We couldn't quite get the registrar to change her class schedule for her this semester. But I think she agreed that each of those sections couldn't be more different than one another. Each learning community afforded Megan their own set of challenges and growth opportunities, and she usually welcomed them with a the level of determination wrapped around her core drive to really connect and create space for her students to share their voices and lived experiences. But I never had to worry, uh, worry much about what she, was in, uh, what she was doing when she was interacting with her learning community. There was some good learning occurring and was reflected by what her students shared. I quote, Megan, through our individual groups, helped me reflect and understand leadership assignments, developments, and so much more about myself and how I engage others. Megan was incredibly easy to talk with and relate to. She understood when the learning community was struggling to discuss ideas and provided effective and engaging activities to get us back on course. She kind of made me look good with the students. And so thank you for doing that. When they were confused, she straightened them out. So Megan, thank you so very much for all of your passion and your drive to make the learning experience truly transformational for your students. Congratulations. Murray, you're gonna introduce our third recipient. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's my honor to introduce the next class leader award recipient, Gage Roberts. Gage has been a class leader three times and is plans to be a class leader again in the fall. When I was thinking about what I wanted to say about Gage here today, I thought about listing all of you know, Gage's accomplishments, but I thought it would give him a big head and I still have to work with him the rest of the semester. So I really just wanted to tell one brief story about Gage. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we found out that Gage was gonna be receiving this award, I announced it in class, in our Lead 212 class. And as soon as I said, you know, hey, Gage is going to receive the Class Leader of the Year Award, everybody, uh, a student immediately responded, um, well, of course he is. Like to them, it was obvious that if there's gonna be a class leader of the year award, Gage is the one that should receive that award. Um, in addition to all like the, the recognition, there was also a broad acknowledgement by the students that Gage was the right choice. On a more personal note, I can't even read my comments, so this is gonna be a little rambly, but um, you know, Gage has been a great partner for me. A lot of times the class leaders kind of uh, at least with me, have filled this kind of mentoring role. I'm new to teaching. This is my second semester. And Gage has taught me so much every single week as we go through the lessons, as we talk about how to engage students and create learning environments that, you know, can help them grow. Um, 
Gage does that. He does it marvelously, but he's also created an environment where I can grow. And I've learned a ton from Gage. So Gage, congratulations. I am honored to be here today to congratulate and celebrate one of our esteemed class leaders on her well-deserved award for her passion and dedication to teaching and mentoring, Katie Whitley. Over the semesters of fall 2021, spring 2022, I have had the privilege of serving and collaborating with Katie and have seen firsthand her commitment and hard work as a class leader. She has not only played a vital role in our introduction to leadership concept, lead to 12 that we enjoy engaging with students in, learning community and the style school, but has also built strong connection with her students. Katie embodies the values of responsible leadership as cited by Converse and all. Leadership is purposeful and in intentional and has inspired her students to become better leaders and make a positive impact in their community. As a matter of fact, she engaged her students in the community leadership experience where we send some of our students in Manhattan community and they did an outstanding work in the community. Katie was a role model for her students. I have witnessed Katie going above and beyond for her students, taking the time to meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, even during critical times, such at the end of the semester. We do all agree here because I'm also a grad student, I know, but she make time for that. Her unwavering commitment to care, service, and integrity is truly admirable and a testament of her dedication to excellence in the classroom and beyond. Katie's continuing commitment to excellence is an inspiration to all of us, I mean the Lead to 12 teaching team. We are proud of her remarkable achievement and look forward to her continuing success as a, an educational specialist. Congratulations once again, Katie. Your hard work and dedication have not gone unnoticed. I am proud of you. Keep up the good work and make the world around you better. Thank you to our exceptional class leader community. Your work has made all of the difference for our lead to 12 classrooms and your legacy will shine through them for years to come. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Carrie Priest. I'm a professor here in the Staley School and pleased to serve as the Director of Graduate Studies and so excited to introduce this next set of awards. The Staley School's graduate programs reflect a spirit of collaboration and commitment to working towards interdisciplinary, engaged, and applied forms of teaching, research, and practice. Our graduate programs include the Leadership Communication Doctoral Program, a new nonprofit graduate certificate, a variety of elective coursework, and a co-curricular program, the Graduate Student Leadership Development Program. Through these programs and courses, we have an incredible opportunity to learn from and with amazing individuals who are leading change. This next set of awards seeks to recognize their accomplishments and contributions to the Staley School, to K-State, 
to the broader field of leadership studies and to the local and global communities in which they live and they serve. Dr. Brandon Cleaver will introduce our first award. Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Brendan Cleaver, Associate Professor of Civic Leadership here at the Staley School. It is a great honor that I stand before you today to present the Staley School's first ever Graduate Student Instructor Teaching Award. The Graduate Student Instructor Teaching Award recognizes innovative approaches to instruction and facilitation. Graduate student instructors recognized with this award have demonstrated a commitment to challenging, supporting, and developing students through an expressed teaching philosophy. I'd like to introduce our very first recipient of this award, Innocent Asselman. So I've had the great fortune to work with Innocent since he was a Mandela Washington fellow here at the Staley School in 2019. Innocent has had a passion for teaching and learning since the beginning. I remember vividly a ride from Manhattan to Omaha, where we talked in depth about Innocent's purpose and passion around the role civic learning has in supporting the socioeconomic development in his home country of Cote d'Ivoire. Innocent is a dynamo in the classroom. Innocent's teaching colleague from CSIF Ghana and Lead Plus Africa, Abdul Latif Al Hassan, a 2019 Staley School Mandela Washington Fellow and current PhD candidate at Memorial University wanted to share a quick message about Innocent's commitment to creating meaningful space for learning that supports student success. So he said, Innocent has an infectious passion for teaching and learning, outstanding ability to communicate complex concepts, and unwavering commitment to student success inside and outside of the classroom. It is a privilege and delight to work with him. Innocent's excellence in the classroom also extends to the Staley School's curriculum through our LEAD 212 Introduction to Leadership Concepts course. Innocent's positive impact has been felt almost immediately since he joined the Leadership Communication PhD program. Uh, Dr. Jay Byland worked closely with Innocent as he was brought onto the teaching team. Dr. Byland noted, watching Innocent use his own context and lived experiences, particularly around social change leadership has been personally fascinating for me. His ability to tell stories that reflect leadership and engage is a powerful vehicle for both teaching and learning with and alongside our students. Innocent has also held key facilitation roles with our most recent Leading Change Institute in Ghana this past March, while successfully completing his preliminary exams, I might add. PhD candidates, Innocent's ability to hold space for productive disagreement while accounting for the distinctions of how leadership practice and process was being talked about in different cultures and contexts was simply amazing. This suit was a gift from Innocent and is a cherished reminder of the transformative learning experience cre created by Innocent at the Leading Change Institute. Innocent, you belong in a classroom, you belong in leadership development spaces. You stand shoulder to shoulder with the best teachers in the field. I have seen Innocent critically analyze the leading edge of leadership studies scholarship and find innovative ways to bring that research into the classroom. His ability to operate at the highest levels of leadership scholarship and translate that knowledge into the classroom context is extremely rare and a true gift. It is a gift to the learning and development of the Staley School that will have lasting impact. Innocent, you are a gifted teacher and leadership education scholar, and we are so thankful you have chosen to share your gifts with the Staley School and our learning community. The seeds that you are planting in the classroom will sprout and grow into a lush forest of knowledge and leadership practice, and this forest will bring value, joy, and well-being for all that walk through it for generations to come. Thank you, Innocent. The Staley School's graduate programs reflect a spirit of collaboration and commitment to working towards interdisciplinary excellence. 
Our programs include leadership communication, as Dr. Priest said. Um, and she also shared about the other academic programs that we have on hand. But I have the special honor today of talking about some of our programming that happens at the school that isn't in the classroom. And to do that, I want to invite you to join me in honoring and welcoming down Ms. Shaquilla Harrison. And Ian, you're welcome to join if you want. So before I tell you about Keila, let me tell you about this award. So this award recognizes excellence in service and leadership, including participation in community service at the university and community levels, and supporting and leading programs that impact the development of the campus and local communities. So Ms. Keila Harrison, well, before I get here, let me tell you, she is a doctoral student. These are the graduate awards. So she is a full-time doctoral student in leadership communication. But I'm actually here to talk about her day job, which is one of her day jobs. As you might imagine, she has several that she is pushing forward while pursuing this PhD. So the job I'm here to talk about is Keila's work with the Edgerly Franklin Leadership Scholars Program. Ms. Harrison herself has been transformational for the program. She initiated programming focused on the whole student development. This included a comprehensive approach to their academic support and well-being as primarily underrepresented students at a predominantly white institution. The Edgerly Franklin Leadership Scholars Program is a critical opportunity to build community while scholars engage in activism, learning, and development. Programming includes a signature learning experience through which scholars travel on a civic tour. So imagine this, if you're a guest here, you get a week off of work, your whole organization is shut down. And what do you opt to do? Well, you get 10 students that you think are awesome, incredible, can make an impact and their mentors. And you say, let's go to Washington DC. I'll plan the trip, we'll tour together. And I'll make sure we get to see the White House inside and out. Ms. Harrison took time away from family, from friends, from probably a much needed break as a graduate student at the university to lead students on this civic tour where they could explore how democratic institutions make space for voices across the country. Organizing the program curriculum, she intentionally connected students with spaces that have historically been inaccessible. Scholars have built new identities and legacies in their practices and they build new approaches to defining their own definitions and concepts of professionalism, civic leadership, and positioning their voices as of great import to our world. Ms. Harrison has built a community of practice within the Edgerly Franklin Leadership Scholars Program, and she and the scholars even outfitted a space that is welcoming. It's on the second floor, 229, you're welcome to stop by, establishing a campus home for their activism, leadership development, and engagement. The space is open daily to students, which again, what does this mean? This means Ms. Harrison's office is also the stop by hangout place, right Jade? For any students that need a break between classes. But they also have a space to meet with leadership coaches to access academic mentoring opportunities and to advance academic and leadership excellence. The space is excellent. Even more impressive is the community belonging that the program through Ms. Harrison's work has provided. So, Keila, we are deeply grateful to you and all your work, continuously in awe of the way that you manage grad school, a professional career, a consulting business, a volunteer political organizing project, and raising two awesome kids. And we're thankful to have you at the Staley School and honored to celebrate you here today as one of our outstanding graduate students. Thank you for all you do. All right, next up, I get the pleasure to uh, introduce Emily Woolard. Come on down. So 
Emily, too, is being recognized as a uh, Graduate Student Service and Leadership Award because of her ability to be other-ish. Two years ago, Emily left uh, K through 12 education. Emily always said, I've got a heartbeat for education. I just don't know if I'm cut out to uh, educate little people. So she came to a college campus and uh, uh, enrolled in uh, college student personnel development. And uh, she's been the strengths GA for the last two years. She hit the ground running. In fact, some people might even say she uh, she hit the ground without a huddle. But she, she engaged really, uh, really quickly, both locally, nationally, and also globally. Locally, Emily did countless workshops, coaching sessions, invited presentations, as she's facilitated across the K-State community. Nationally, she was even invited to take peer coaches up to uh, Hastings, Nebraska, to help Hastings College think about what peer coaching could look like through a strengths lens. She's had a chance to leverage her developer strength uh, to coach mentor uh, and train 17 different strengths peer coaches that have reached over 1,500 students in the last two years with one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, opportunities. It's, it's absolutely uh, uh, amazing. Now nationally, Emily, or not nationally, but globally, Emily had an uh, opportunity to travel to uh, Benin, Africa just this semester to do a strengths workshop uh, connecting with one of our former Yali fellows, uh, Norrence, uh, to, uh, to, to travel and invest strengths on a global lens. Emily, you've invested deeply in the development of others. You've aimed your strengths of woo, communication, positivity, developer, and empathy to uh, uh, help people thrive each and every day. You aim strengths at engagement and well-being. And we know that this has worked because during Emily's time here, she too got engaged. Ethan, congratulations. And, and, Emily has said on countless times that the Staley School has been a connection to, uh, to her family. Uh, Phil, Ellen, thank you for being here, representing uh, as well in terms of your well-being where you can constantly thrive. Emily, congratulations. Hello again. This next award recognizes excellence in research by graduate students in the Staley School of Leadership. This award is named in honor of Dr. Robert Shoup. Dr. Shoup, could you please stand and be recognized for a moment? Dr. Shoup retired in 2014 after four decades of leadership and service to K-State. Dr. Shoup was a professor of education law and a founder and senior scholar in the School of Leadership and served as director of the Cargill Center for Ethical Leadership. Nationally recognized, a nationally recognized expert in the area of school law, he has authored or co-authored more than 100 journal articles, 15 books and several monographs and book chapters on various legal issues. <clears throat> he is also the author of two texts that were foundational to the early development of leadership studies curriculum and programming. Virtuous leadership was one, and leadership lessons from Bill Snyder is the other. We are thrilled that Dr. Shoup is with us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for modeling what it means to engage in scholarship that informs and enhances leadership learning and development. Would you like to join me at the front to honor our inaugural Robert Shoup Student Research Award recipients? Thank you. It is my honor and privilege to introduce Chibizor Azabuki. As one of our research award winners, Chibizor, please come to the front. Please, thank you. A little bit about Chibizor. She's an amazing person and an amazing scholar. She has already written a book called The Girl Who Found Water. And she is founder of the Hosky Water Aid and Empowerment Foundation. 
Through her NGO, she has provided clean water for over 60,000 Nigerians and has provided grants to several young people who embark on water projects. Chibazor has won numerous grants and, fellowship and fellowships and continues to win them. Most recently, the AAUW International Fellowship. Her scholarship is also, also exceptional. Chibazor is completing the graduate certificate in qualitative research. Uh, she also recently passed her prelim, so she is a, a doctoral candidate. Chibazor already has one peer-reviewed publication, one under review, and several papers and conference presentations uh, in progress. One of her research projects examines how international fellowship and professional development opportunities create pathways for young Africans for, uh, for young Africans to become change agents within their communities. Her dissertation will focus on the resilience of indigenous women, and she expects to finish in 2024. <laughs> she will. She was the 2022 recipient of the Association of Leadership Educators Founding Mothers Awards, recognizing outstanding graduate students for their potential to impact the growing field of leadership education. And finally, Chibazor also does really great uh, public facing work. So you can read her on blogs and on social media. Congratulations again, Chibazor. Uh, well done. Thank you. Uh, Tim Stevensmeyer, I'm director of our university's Office of Engagement, and I also run a uh, research shop called Third Floor Research. And connected to that, I'd like to invite Kehan Shamse Yosefi down to the front. So uh, Kehan arrived in uh, January of 2021. Uh, he was actually admitted to our PhD program in uh, 2018 and spent three years um, in Tehran navigating red tape between our government and theirs uh, and was resilient enough to then finally get here and show up in 2021. And um, it's made a huge impact on our program. Uh, today, Kehan is working on a dissertation and um, is a valued research associate with Third Floor Research. That's a partnership with the Kansas Leadership Center and the Staley School of Leadership right here. So Kehan's been working uh, there for the last three years. In the past 27 months, Kehan's co-authored a book, published four public essays, delivered three academic conference presentations, and has a book chapter in press. Um, his dissertation is a, a first of its kind. He's developing a quantitative scale, like a way to measure um, adaptive leadership behaviors, the very things we're trying to instill in graduate and undergraduate students here at this um, campus. And on top of that, um, his productivity is a testament to his curiosity, his intelligence, and his resiliency. If he's not on the second floor of leadership studies, he's likely in the library, <laughs> making sense of how cognitive psychology and adult learning theories inform adaptive leadership capacity. Um, Kehan, before he came here, was a public planner in Iran. And what that kind of means is that um, he has the expertise to work vertically, you know, to get things done in a system. So he can do that, and he did that really well. And then when he came here, and what he's been up to is figuring out how to do horizontal work, you know, how to engage community members when you don't have authority, when you don't have the power to tell people what to do. And he's not only learning how to do that, he's learning how to research that so we can make sense of that for broader opportunities. I'm really proud of you, Kehan. You deserve this award. Thank you, Dr. Shu.
In addition to these internal awards that we've highlighted so far this afternoon, Staley School of Leadership Studies students are being recognized across campus through their leadership, community commitment, and student focus. The first set of names you see on this screen right here are Staley School students who've been selected as award recipients from the K-State Alumni Association, so across the whole university. And a few of you are here today. Um, Alicia, Kaleho, Kehan, Alaya, will you still, will you stand to be recognized? Fabulous to win that campus award. The next set of awards on the slide were awarded by our Dean of Students and to graduating seniors who have demonstrated outstanding contributions to student life while at K-State. Uh, two of our international students, Chibazor, we've already seen, I'm going to ask her to stand again, and Exi, um, we are also celebrating today. Could you stand? So this award is for their involvement winner with our international students. Thank you. And finally, a congratulations to Jess Ramirez for her extraordinary student award. Congratulations to all of our exceptional students that were named on those two slides. Up next, hands-on K-State student coordinator, Campbell McNaught. Hello, everybody. I'm here to um, announce some of the Hands-On K-State Awards. So for the past 10 years, as a part of National Volunteer Week, we have partnered with Community First National Bank to recognize outstanding individuals and groups who have volunteered their time and leadership to change and improve the community. In recognition of their service, Community First National Bank provides $250 to a local nonprofit selected by these honorees. The first of these awards is Outstanding Kansas Students State Student Volunteer. This award goes to a K-State student who has worked with hands on K-State and demonstrated exemplary leadership and service. This student displays dedication, responsibility, commitment, and sensitivity to diversity as they strive to become an active citizen in the community. We would like to recognize Andrew Phipps as the outstanding student volunteer. Can you please join us out front? Andrew has been one of our most consistent volunteers and always helps in any way possible at every single mobile food distribution and hands-on event that he volunteers for. Andrew is majoring in industrial systems and manufacturing engineering, minoring in leadership studies, and getting a certificate in nonprofit leadership. He's also um, a part of Cats Cupboard and will be in the administration BLT for leadership ambassadors and a Snyder Leadership Legacy Fellow. So he truly understands value of leadership and hard work here at the Saley School. Andrew's hard work and leadership at every mobile food distribution ensures that they always run smoothly. We literally could not do it without him. His hard work really pays off, especially for us hands-on people. Because um, he always goes above and beyond with helping park cars and deliver um, leftover food to Cat's Cupboard. And it has truly been an honor to work with him. So congratulations, Andrew. Next, I will present this year's Outstanding Student Organization Award. This award is given to an organization that is recognized through K-State's Center for Student Involvement and has been active with hands-on K-State during the academic year. This recipient demonstrates an ethic of service on and off campus and is committed to involving others in service and activism. This year, we are honoring the K-State Food Security Scholars as the Outstanding K-State Student Organization. And I would like to invite Evan Bergeron and Hattie Polson to receive the award for Food Security Scholars. This year, it has been an honor to work with Food Security Scholars. FSS is an organization focused on gathering students interested in understanding and addressing food security and the poverty cycle. 
They're able to do this with amazing members who are always willing to step up and help out in the community. From educational resources to getting their hands dirty at volunteer events, food security scholars can be relied upon. Hands-On has been lucky to have their help firsthand. FSS has gone above and beyond to help the community by, help, by having members volunteer at mobile food distributions hosted by Hands-On. And they're very hard workers, trust me, it's always great when they show up. <laughs> you can tell that FSS scholars are truly passionate about their work and they are making K-State and the greater Manhattan community a better place for everyone. Thank you, food security scholars, for your commitment and excellence and community service. Hey, our third award recognizes our outstanding community service partner. This award honors a group from the greater Manhattan area that has partnered with Hands-On in order to meet a community need. This group promotes an ethic of service in their community through ongoing efforts and are committed to involving others in service and activism. They've effectively mobilized our large and diverse population to address an issue of importance here in our Manhattan community. I have the pleasure of introducing this year's outstanding community service partner, Be Able. I'd like to invite Scott Boos and Marlon Jackson down to the stage for the award. Be Able is a place of hope where fresh starts can begin for anyone. They connect the community and social service organizations to serve those who need it most. They work with compassion, dignity, and respect, and Be Able provides opportunities for volunteers to learn about people who receive their services while working alongside them. Yearly, Be Able hosts job fairs that K-State and other organizations attend to provide employment assistance and beyond. Be Able has been recognized continuously in the community of Manhattan, and we're honored to have them with us this evening. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to all people in our greater Manhattan community and the value that you bring to Manhattan. Thank you. And finally, it's my honor to introduce the Outstanding Service Champion. This honors an individual from our greater Manhattan area who has demonstrated outstanding efforts in volunteerism and service addressing a community need. This recipient displayed excellence in community service, civic engagement, and social change. This year's Outstanding Service Champion is Carla Hagemeister. Carla, will you please join me at the front? So Carla moved to Manhattan 30 years ago for school. And at that time, she became one of the most involved and active members in the Manhattan community. She is the director of the Flint Hills Bread Basket, the president of the USD 3D3 Manhattan Ogden Board of Education, and is involved with Thrive, True Colors, the Crisis Center, the Manhattan Daycare and Learning Center. And Carla is truly willing to step up and assist with anything that makes our community better. She looks at systems and changes that policy within our nonprofit organizations can have an impact on those who most need it. And we appreciate your attention to those systems, Carla. Manhattan is better because of you. And you said that your favorite part about living in Manhattan is that it's a community of passionate people who give freely of their time, talents, and gifts. We believe this describes you perfectly. And we're honored to live in a community with someone, someone like you at the helm. So thank you for your leadership, Carla. Our next award will be presented by our Staley School Ambassadors, represented by Austin Drake. The Rost Award was established by the Staley School Ambassadors to recognize a member of the Staley School faculty or staff who exemplifies the mission statement. 
which is to develop knowledgeable, ethical, caring, inclusive leaders for a diverse and changing world. The winner of this award demonstrates these characteristics in their own lives, but also inspires others to become better leaders. This year, the Staley School of Ambassadors would like to present the Rost Award to Dr. Mac Benavides. Dr. Benavides is an award-winning researcher and assistant professor in the Staley School of Leadership. Through his time at the Staley School, Mac has been able to connect with countless students and share his passion for inclusive leadership. He isn't afraid to ask the tough questions, which helps present leadership as a complex journey based on each person's identities and lived experiences. His enthusiasm, patience, and mentorship have truly made an impact on those around him. One student even credits Mac's passion for service as the reason for their continued leadership development. Congratulations, Mac. Been a good day, huh? Pretty nice day when you get to say a lot of nice things about a lot of nice people doing really good work. Um, I'm Mary Toller, and I'm the Dean of the Staley School of Leadership. And I'm presenting our final award. Our final award is the Susan M. Scott Award for Community Leadership. This award was established by the faculty and staff of the Staley School of Leadership to recognize the extraordinary leadership of Dr. Susan Scott. Susan is the founding director of leadership studies and has and continues to model for all of us inclusive, effective community leadership. We at the Staley School are deeply grateful for her efforts her, de her demonstration of community leadership, and we're not alone. Her early work with the Rape Survivors Support Group was the start of the Crisis Center of Manhattan. She co-founded the Riley County Women's Political Caucus. In the 80s, she worked with others to establish a sister city relationship with Nindiri, Nicaragua, and formed a community group to advocate for progressive public school learning activity. Her community activism in later years was one of was as one of the founders of PFLAG, beginning a support group for family members of the LGBTQ plus community. At K-State, Susan co-chaired the Task Force on Retention of Minority Students, which brought about many changes, significantly the establishment of the Office of Diversity. Using the same task force model, Susan studied and advocated for adult students, women students, gay, lesbian, and bisexual students, she has worked relentlessly for an inclusive K-State community. In 1996, she focused her efforts on instilling in students their ability and responsibility to lead, to serve the common good, and she became the founding director of what is now the Staley School of Leadership. Susan is a woman of many rare gifts and talents who has generously devoted them all in service to progressive change. The faculty and staff of the Staley School take this opportunity to honor the leadership we witness as members of the campus and local community and lift up that leadership as a model for our students and our graduates as they leave to make their mark and exercise leadership in their workplaces and communities. In Susan's honor, the faculty established this award to recognize others whose leadership has shaped our community, made us healthier, safer, more just, more peaceful and purposeful, made us better through their community leadership. Today, we recognize Ben and Rachel Motley as this year's Susan M. Scott Community Leadership Award recipients. Rachel and Ben. Stand awkwardly here. Well, I talk about you. <laughs> So Ben and Rachel moved from Kansas City and Hutchinson, respectively, to Manhattan to attend K-State. They met and fell in love with the community and each other. Rachel graduated in the fall semester of 2012 with a bachelor's degree in general human ecology 
and a leadership studies minor with a nonprofit focus. In spring of 2014, helping a friend fine tune his very, very new coffee business, Ben left college to dive headfirst into hospitality. After taking full ownership of Arrow Coffee in 2016, the two expanded and opened Pool House Kitchen and Bar in uh, the summer of 2018 and in 2022, opened their downtown coffee and cocktail location in the historic Wareham Hotel. That's 2020, that was April of 2022. That was a year ago, yeah. yeah. Nearly 10 years later, they're both still passionate about hospitality and the Manhattan community. You might imagine that folks in the field of leadership have seen our fair share of mission, vision, and values, and that taken seriously, they speak volumes about an organization's purpose, character, and contributions. Just a few highlights from our friends at Arrow. Quote, to truly take care of someone, we have to meet their needs, not just the simple basic need they came to us to fulfill, cup of coffee, but to go beyond the obvious and care for our customers, employees, and community in a deeper holistic way. Coffee, and I believe we could say the same for food and the other beverages um, that they excel at, um, is by nature a people-centered product. product. It brings people together into a shared space. We believe preserving the human side of the cafe experience is the key to taking care of our customers. Human connection is also vital in maintaining ethical business practices, being socially aware and engaged in our community, and creating and sustaining meaningful relationships. Their words and their behavior, their conduct, the way that they do business. Rachel and Ben are committed to community and promote progressive change through their creative business model and inclusive approach to their patronage. They work with local farms and makers, they source their ingredients from sustainable farms, they put people first, and are committed to bringing all types of people together. And they care about the people they work most closely with, their employees. By providing a supportive work culture where rest is mandatory and individual strengths are celebrated. So please join me in congratulating our 2023 Susan M. Scott Community Leadership Award recipients, Rachel and Ben Motley. Well, I'm already crying, so that's fun. Um, thank you guys so much. If you know anything about Ben and I, you know that he is the front of house guy and I do the behind the scenes work. So this is out of my element. Um, but looking around the room, there are so many familiar faces, so many people who taught me the basic fundamentals of leadership that I still practice to this day um, in this very building and in this very room. Um, we are so grateful to be here and so honored to be included in this list of recipients, including people like Olivia Collins, who I love dearly and who impacted me greatly, um, who dedicated their lives to making an impact on this community and for changing it for the better. Ben and I started working in hospitality in our teens. In our 20s, we began managing. And now in our 30s, we have owned Arrow for nearly 10 years this August. Um, the thing that we love about hospitality is that it opens so many doors into the community. This allows us to be part of the community in such a meaningful way, which is the core of community leadership. Because of that, we've met most of you and countless others who have made an impact on our lives and on our business community. Jane Goodall once said, I like to envision the world as a jigsaw puzzle. If you look at the place if you look at it, the whole picture, it is overwhelming and terrifying. But if you work on your little part of the jigsaw and you know that other people around the world are working on their little bits, that's what will give you hope. Our businesses are like little puzzle pieces, much like each of you have yours, whether it's on campus, at your jobs, in your homes, in your faith communities, or like us, in your restaurant. <laughs> um, as we look at the issues in our county and our state, in our world, it seems like too much. It's scary sometimes. But when we take time to listen to those around us, 
to understand the issues that are important to our immediate communities, we begin to see the importance that our words and actions hold. If we work on our individual little puzzle pieces alongside you, as you work on your little individual puzzle pieces, that's where great change starts to take place. I'll leave you with an, yet another quote from another strong, smart female leader, American anthropologist, Margaret Mead. She encouraged, encouraged her peers to never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens could change the world. She says, indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Thank you all for being thoughtful, committed citizens and for bettering your communities alongside us. So thank you all for being with us here this afternoon um, to celebrate the remarkable members of uh, our K-State and our Manhattan communities. Um, please join us in the lobby um, for refreshments and connection and celebrate. Thank you. Thank you.